In that last lesson, we talked about counting, and now that we know how to count, we can do some discrete probability. And the basic information about probability, like how to calculate probability in general, we're not going to go over um, because this is an Algebra 2 lesson. And I think you know how to find simple probabilities. So let's talk about Algebra 2 probability concepts. Well, discrete probability is all about counting the number of items in sets. So first, we'll talk about the intersection of sets. And these are elements that belong to both, meaning they are common to both. So for example, using our set notation, I have the set ABC. And then I have an upside down U, which actually stands for intersection. And then I have another set, AEIOU. And so if I want to find the intersection of these two sets, they are the elements common to both sets, which in this case is the letter A. Now, not all groups of sets have intersections. So we, of course, need a word for when our sets do not have intersections. And that word is disjoint. So if you have two disjoint sets, that means they have nothing in common. In contrast to the intersection, we have the union. And the union of two sets is the joining of two sets, meaning elements that belong to at least one set. That's the way that we say it mathematically. So the union is written with the set ABC, union for U for union, which totally makes sense, and then AEIOU. And if I want to join those two sets together in the union, I'm going to write A once because they're common, and then I have the B and the C and the EIOU. So the union is when I squish the two sets together remembering only to count that repeated element or those repeated elements once. Now, if you want a throwback to elementary school, you can look at this in terms of Venn diagrams because sets and Venn diagrams go hand in hand. So here is a Venn diagram of these two sets. ABC is one circle. AEIOU is the other circle. The intersection is where they overlap, so they have A in common. And the union is all of this stuff together. So A, B, C, A, E, I, O, U. The reason why we talk about union is because we want to find the probabilities of unions. So it says if A and B are events in the same sample space, meaning same experiment and number of outcomes in the experiment, the probability of A and B occurring is given by it's a union of A and B. That's the probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening, subtracting off anything that's common, all right? Now this is best illustrated by an example, and I'm going to go back to the standard deck of playing cards. So one card is selected from a standard deck of 52, and please make sure you know the basics of a standard deck. It has 52 cards four suits, 13 cards in each suit. We don't count jokers, that's not standard. And I wanna know what is the probability that it will either be a heart or a face card, all right? Now, I'm trying to find the probability of it being a heart or a face card. Oh, and I should have drawn a little happy face. Ah. So the way I find this probability is to find the probability that it's a heart, find the probability that it's a face card, and then find the probability that it's both a heart and a face card. I know that I have 13 hearts in a deck. So the probability that a card drawn at random is going to be heart is 13 out of 52. And I know that there are 12 face cards. And a face card is a card with a face, meaning queen, jack, and kings. So there are 12 of those in total. But I know that those two sets are not disjoint because there are face cards that are hearts. And I need to take that out. So if I think about it, there's the king of hearts, the queen of hearts, and the jack of hearts, which are counted in both of these. So I have to subtract one of those instances off. So I need to have the three out of 52 taken away. So the probability that it's a heart or a face, and it's or, not and, or, big difference, is going to be 13 plus 12 minus 3 over 52, 
which is 22 over 52 or 11 26 now you must read your questions very carefully because or is very different than and which you should have remembered from the inequalities unit or means I want one or the other if I had said and then that's a much easier question because if I want to know if the probability that it's a heart and a face card then well that's just 3 out of 52 because I only have three of those but the word or change this to being a union problem which requires me to subtract off the intersection Now, if I'm lucky, I'm going to deal with mutually exclusive events, which means the intersection of the two sets is empty. The two sets are disjoint, because if you're mutually exclusive, you are one or the other, not both at the same time. So if, it's, if the events are mutually exclusive, then I don't have to worry about subtracting off the intersection. I just have to find the probability of A and add to the probability of B. So think very carefully. Do you have overlap in your probabilities or not? Another big question when you are dealing with discrete probability and counting, you have to think about whether or not your events are independent or dependent. If they are independent, then the occurrence of one has no effect on the occurrence of other. It's like if I have that bag of marbles, and after I draw one bag, I put it back into the bag so that the contents of the bag never change from one draw to the next. Those are independent events. If I take the marble out and chuck it at someone, and then the contents of the bag have changed, then those are not independent events, and this does not work right. If I have independent events, I just have to multiply their individual probabilities together. And so we use that fact for examples like this. A random number generator selects three integers from 1 to 20, and you need to find the probability that all three are less than or equal to 5. And since it is a random number generator, I have three numbers that are going to be drawn. And I know I can just multiply the individual probabilities together because what the computer or random number generator shot out the first time has no impact on what it's going to shoot out the second time or the third time because it's random. So to figure this out, I need to know the probability that one of these integers, the first one, is going to be less than or equal to 5. And so there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers that are less than or equal to 5 out of 1 to 20. And so it's 5 over 20. And the second number has also a chance of 5 out of 20 of being less than or equal to 5. And the last one is also 5 out of 20. And those, of course, all simplify to a fourth, which leaves me 1 fourth cubed, or 1 over 64. Now a serious headache saver with probability is knowing about this thing called the complement of a set. So complements are everything but. So the complement of A is written A prime and so if I think about well what's the complement of rolling a 1 on a number cube? Well that's rolling not one, which is two, three, four, five, or six. And I mean, literally everything but that event is the complement of the event. So that means if I want to know the probability of the event or its complement, well, that's everything, so that's just one. And most importantly, if I add the individual probabilities, I add the probability of A and the probability of the complement of A or not A, and then I'm going to get one, which allows me to write this expression, if I need to find the complement of A or the probability of the complement of A, I just have to subtract off the probability of A. And I said, this is a serious time saver and you will see in this next example. A machine averages one faulty unit every 1,000 it produces. What is the probability that an order of 200 units will have one or more faulty units? And this one or more faulty units is what makes this problem annoying if you don't know about complements because you would have to figure out the probability that one was defective and then two were defective and then three were defective all the way up to 200 and then add up all those probabilities and then figure out that answer, which is very annoying. 
So if you come across a problem like this where you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta figure out 199 probabilities or 200 probabilities, uh, don't. That means that I want you instead to use the complement. So you think about the opposite of this. So the complement of one or more faulty units is that, well, this includes one faulty unit to 200 faulty units. What's not included here? Well, the probability that I have no faulty units. So I have two options here. If I have a lot of free time, then I could, of course, find the probability that there's one, probably that there's two, probably that there's three, so on and so forth, up to the probability that they're all faulty, which would be horrible. Or I could realize that the one case missing here is the probability that none are faulty. And if I know that this plus all of these equal one, then this probability here is going to equal one minus the probability that none are faulty. So what would you rather calculate? The probability that none of these things are messed up or all of this stuff? Well, I'd rather figure out the probability that none of these things are messed up. So I have to think about what's the probability of one unit being perfect? Well, one is messed up out of a thousand, so that means the probability of perfection is going to be 999 over a thousand, all right? Now that's just one unit. This is just the probability that one of these things is perfect. But I have 200 independent events here. So I'm having 200 units produced. That means I need to figure out, well, what 999 over 1,000 is raised to the 200th power because these are 200 individual events. And so then this is when you get your calculator to figure out that this is approximately 0 0.819. So the probability that every single one of those 200 units is perfectly functioning is approximately 819 over 1,000. So if I want to know if one or more of these units is faulty, well, I know faulty is faulty or perfect add up to one. So then my actual answer is 1 minus 0 0.819, which is approximately 0 0.181 is the probability that one or more units is faulty. So, yay.